So I have had my hands on the Witcher 3 next gen update for about a week, both the PS5 and as of the last couple of days, the PC version. As of recording this, the review embargo just lifted within the last 24 hours, but I figured you have more than enough options at this point for graphics comparisons and straight reviews, so I decided to do something a little different. The moment I had the update downloaded, I was already thinking about something specific, and what would happen if I were to start poking at that specific thing. And let me tell you right now, the results were fascinating. So, if you're a somewhat longtime viewer of this channel, you may remember that several months ago, I made a video about things that longtime players hate in The Witcher 3. What I covered ranged from various issues that have been community complaints ever since the game came out, to one or two extremely specific things that annoyed me personally, and I had never seen anyone else talk about. So, over the weekend, I went through the new version of the game and tested everything I covered in that video to see if CDPR fixed those problems. And in the case of several, including a few that really caught me off guard, they have, and in creative ways, some of which you may not even notice without specifically looking out for them. This video will be the highlights of about two days of testing, so let's get to it. We'll start with Hattori, the infamous elven blacksmith who promises Geralt a sword that will outshine all others in return for his help getting his forge up and running again, which is no small task. Unfortunately though, the sword he gave you after everything you do for him was always underwhelming to say the very least, and really not even worth using because you'd almost certainly have something better by the time you could do his quest. However, and I'm sure you know where this is going, CDPR have went ahead and changed that, as the sword Hattori gives you, Blade from the Bits, has been drastically upgraded. It still has the same stat bonus, a 50% critical hit damage increase, but now the sword scales with your character. What that means is that this sword now sort of functions as a mini Erendite, as the damage will increase as you level up. There's even more to the upgrade though, as Blade from the Bits now has three runic slots by default, whereas before it only had one. That means you can install three upgrades right into the hilt, which makes this sword one of the very first you can realistically come across with that option. Most you'll find in Velen and early Novigrad will have one or maybe two. Another sword we talked about in that first Things Players Hate video was the one Croc on Crate gives you, which suffers from a similar issue. If you go through the trouble of helping both Saris and Hjalmar to the point of one becoming ruler, Croc will answer your request for help fighting the Wild Hunt by giving you a sword he says is absolutely legendary. In fact, even Geralt had heard of it before. So this is Winter's Blade. Thought it was a legend. Forged in Mahakam, tempered in dragon fire. However, again, the sword had never been all that great. Its bonuses are neat, but if you'd even somewhat been keeping up with getting gear upgraded, you'd have something way better by the time he gives it to you. Well, CDPR have done the same thing to Winter's Blade as they did to Hattori's sword. The damage now scales with your character, and instead of having two runic slots like it did before, it now has all three available. To move on from underwhelming swords, how about the fall damage problem? Well, if you're wondering, that has also been addressed. Whereas before it was a little ridiculous, and if you didn't know the roll trick you'd constantly die, fall damage is now a non-issue. It still exists for sure, but the minimum height where you'd start taking damage has been increased. It's very obvious while playing, a little bit harder to illustrate on screen, but you'll take less damage from falls that would have killed you in the past, and falls that would have eaten up a third of your health before now don't even take a sliver. Unless you regularly fling yourself off of cliff sides or the top of Kaer Morin, you won't be having any issues if you decide to jump back into the game with the new update. Next up, I have something extremely specific. In my original video, I even said that this probably only irritates me, but I was going to include it anyway, just to see if anyone else could relate. What I'm talking about can be found on a little Skelligan island called Eldberg. This is where the lighthouse quest can be found, and on this island is a very small bridge. This bridge had always annoyed me to my core, because it clearly looks like you can jump over it, but most of the time it wouldn't work, as Geralt would instead leap into the dive animation and fall all the way down. Well, I was not expecting anything to have been done about this, because like I said, it was beyond specific, and totally a nitpick that I just wanted to include for my own sake, but I fast-traveled to Skellige, made my way to Eldberg, and I was very surprised to find that the bridge had been fixed. They didn't just fix the little bug of Geralt diving instead of jumping, but they actually fixed the bridge itself. I'm not gonna lie, this one does kinda make me wonder if someone at CDPR saw that video I made months back. Maybe not, but I suppose it's possible. So, next up, how about the Crow's Perch Fast Travel Marker? Have they fixed the most common Witcher 3 complaint? That being that every time you need to visit Crow's Perch and want to fast travel there, you're spawned way outside the keep and have to run all the way up to the main gate. 
Well, the answer is yes, sort of. When you start the Bloody Baron questline, the marker will be where it always was, way outside the outer gate and across the bridge. However, once you make your way up to the Baron's castle, you may notice a peasant hammering away at a little project. He'll continue doing this throughout the entirety of the Baron quest, and only after you've completed Return to Crookback Bog will this brand new marker become available. The old one also stays in place, so you have two options. The reason this new marker is delayed until after the main Baron stuff is over is pretty simple. There's two big events, one during the main quest and one just after Return to Crookback Bog that would have a deeply lessened impact if you could just pop right in next to the castle. However, this new marker is not useless by any means. There are three different Witcher contracts and a fist fighting quest that take you back to Crow's Perch, plus every single time you want to craft armor using Ioana, you also have to go back there. So if you want to minimize running across that bridge, just hold off on the side content in that area until after you've wrapped up the Baron storyline. So just a quick video today that was the result of probably 20 plus hours of testing. Obviously much of that testing went nowhere and didn't make the cut, but I thought the highlights were interesting. Thanks for watching, if you want more Witcher content in your sub box feel free to subscribe, and if you enjoyed the video consider leaving a like as it helps to get these videos out there. By the way, if you don't already own The Witcher 3, it's currently on sale for just $8 on GOG. I have a link in the description to that deal which also helps out the channel. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.